Hello all, and welcome to another Digital Naked Faith. This is our worship service for December of 2021, and we're so glad to be gathered here together with you again. We hope everyone is getting ready for and has a very Merry Christmas. Christmas is a special time, I think for all of us, a time of joy and laughter and gathering. With all that in mind, this month, we are maintaining our theme of social justice. What did that look like in context with Christmas? Well, let's get into it. It's the most wonderful time of the year, right? Christmas for a lot of people, myself included, is something to look forward to, something anticipated for an entire year. Christmas is a season of hope, Love, joy, togetherness. The question is, though, is why is that sort of spirit saved for once a year? And this question isn't new. It's something that I think many of us have thought about at one point or another. Why can't every day feel like Christmas? Well, part of it, I think, is that Christmas is a reminder of all those good things. As the year comes to a close, we reflect on what has been and who we are. And in many ways, Christmas brings our humanity to light. Something forgotten or overlooked in everyday living. And this isn't a bad thing, and it's not something to feel bad about. But how do we carry the Christmas spirit throughout the year? Calvin Coolidge once said, Christmas is not a time nor a season, but a state of mind. I think that's a powerful thought. Maybe in keeping Christmas as a, theme, as a theme rather than a day, we can do better in remembering our common humanity. You know, the humanity we all share, the love we all deserve, and the gift that it is to be together. Togetherness, though, is something that maybe we take for granted. It's so important to acknowledge that in this season of hope and joy and togetherness, that there will be folks who don't experience a few or any of these things that we hold so dear as central to Christmas itself. 
Christmas as quoted by Kevin McAllister's mom from Home Alone is the season of perpetual hope. And my hope is that we work to include those who have no table to gather at. Like we've talked about this year, it's about being intentional. Taking the spirit we feel at Christmas and putting it out into the world. Not just on the 25th of December, but at every opportunity possible. As a kid, Christmas was big. And I don't mean big like family. Christmas always came with a ton of gifts. And growing up, my dad put a lot of emphasis on the gifts. Not because we asked for them or we had a lot of money, but because that's what made Christmas for my dad. The looks on my sister and I's faces as we opened the gifts. You know, the more gifts, the more we would light up. And the more we lit up, the better my dad's Christmas was. It was interesting as I got older. I started to get embarrassed by the amount of stuff we got. Not that I didn't appreciate it, but I just began to see what other people were getting for Christmas and realized that it was never as big as ours. And I felt this guilt, this weight. As I've grown, I've come to understand the joy of giving gifts. So I understand where my dad was coming from. But it's also not the giving of the gift that gets me. It's the overall joy of it all. Don't get me wrong, I like things. I collect a lot of things. Gifts are one of my love languages. But I've come to realize that Christmas is so much more. And I'm reminded more of this more and more every year. Every year I get to spend with my grandparents, my family. It just goes to show that Christmas is found in your heart, not in a box or a bag. People that do not have a house or a home or a place to sleep at night, this is not a new issue in our society. And yet conversations around it don't often enough focus specifically on youth, on adolescents who find themselves in this situation. And there's something about it that just hits a little bit differently. This is an important time in your life when you're supposed to be exploring your identity, connecting more with your friends, beginning to decide and identify what's most important to you in life. And having a safe haven to feel secure in at the end of a day is so, so important in allowing youth to be able to explore and stretch their boundaries in a healthy way. I think we underestimate the importance of that home base because it's difficult to understand 
unless you have known the absence of that safety. According to the Without a Home National Youth Homelessness Survey, approximately 20% of Canada's homeless population is youth between the ages of 13 and 24 years old. Within one year, between 35 and 40,000 youth are experiencing instability in their housing. These might be young people who are staying in a shelter, living in hostels, couch surfing with family and friends, or living on the streets. In Calgary, it's estimated that there are approximately 250 youth without housing on any given night. 250 is a lot of teenagers who don't have that home base, that safety net. That's 8.3 classrooms worth of youth. That's 12 and a half hockey teams. That's 250 kids who are not being given the opportunity to develop themselves in a safe and healthy manner. And safety is a big piece of this. Youth without housing who are living on the streets are six times more likely to be victims of violent crime. And they're more likely to experience traumatic events, which we know is gonna have a much bigger and longer lasting impact on their development. And this is something that does not affect all demographics equally. Indigenous youth are overrepresented in the homeless population in Canada. LGBTQ2S plus youth make up 25 to 40 percent of this population in Canada. And in particular, one in three transgender youth are rejected from shelters due to their gender identity. So now we have people who are already vulnerable and marginalized that have an even harder time accessing resources to help them meet their basic needs. Needs that every single person deserves to have met. Now, the underlying causes of this issue are complicated and multifaceted, as is often the case. But it's important to at least look at some of those pieces to begin growing our understanding. Family and relational conflict is a huge factor. Often these youth have experienced conflict, abuse, or discrimination of some kind. In some cases, youth actually may feel safer at a shelter. Poverty is a massive factor in this as well, paired with inadequate supports in place or difficulty accessing financial assistance. We know that that cycle of poverty is so, so difficult for families to break out of. Discrimination of any form perpetuates this issue as youth who are discriminated against may be unfairly denied opportunities for employment and education, as well as their ability to access needed resources. Mental health can also play a big factor, and importantly, difficulty accessing adequate and affordable resources. There's a concept from this guy named Maslow called the hierarchy of needs. It's something you might have heard of before, you might have learned about in school. It basically says that when we are lacking needs on a more foundational level within this pyramid hierarchy, we can't focus on the needs on a level above it because they're building blocks, they build on each other. The very bottom, most foundational step of this hierarchy is physiological needs, which includes things like air, water, food, and importantly for this theme, shelter. Youth are already a vulnerable population. Their brains are still developing, which means they're more vulnerable to be impacted by traumatic events. They're also necessarily reliant on others, on adults, on caregivers, parents, to provide them these basic needs. So when these needs are not provided, they no longer have the opportunity to focus on the needs like their physical and mental health, friendships, a sense of belonging, school. These youth are being robbed of the opportunity to focus on the needs that they should be focusing on, instead being forced to focus on meeting a need that should be provided by somebody else. The first piece that we can do is begin to understand all the wonderful organizations that do exist in Calgary already doing incredible work with these youth to help support them. So just to name a few, the Calgary John Howard Society provides housing and supports for youth uh, without housing. The Safe Haven Foundation provides similar supports specifically for at-risk girls. Woods Homes provides a number of supports for at-risk youth and their families, and they have a 24-7 crisis line. Mealshare is a nonprofit started by a friend of mine whose mission is to help end youth hunger, which youth hunger and youth without housing goes hand in hand. The Alex in Calgary provides a number of supports, including a youth health center, which, which provides access to medical and mental health support for youth ages 12 to 24. The Trellis Society oversees a number of programs, including Ara Host Homes, which helps provide appropriate housing for LGBTQ2S plus youth who are in need. The Home Fire program specifically provides housing and support for Indigenous youth. 
And Avenue 15 is a relatively well-known youth shelter also under the umbrella of the Trello Society. And they're an organization that St. Andrew's United Church uh, has made strides to support over the years. They operate 24-7, meaning you can call or walk in at any point if you're needing their support. This year, during the holiday season, Avenue 15 has specifically put out a call for underwear and socks for teenagers. And we are putting out a call to our community to help make this our action piece for this month. This is a pretty simple ask from the organization. And at the same time, it's such a fundamental need, particularly in a cold season, clean underwear and socks are pretty important. Again, it's one of those things that we probably take for granted unless we're without them. So if you're interested in donating, these items can be dropped off at the St. Andrews Center or with either myself or Brenda up until January 10th, after which we will deliver them. This is not an issue that exists in isolation. There are many systemic pieces and many preventative action pieces that need to be and are being worked on. This includes access to financial assistance for families who are struggling, funding for and access to mental health support for youth and families, accessible parental support programs, and many, many other pieces. Let's work together and see if we can make even a small bit of a difference. And now, Reverend Nick Coates from Red Deer Lake United Church will lead us in prayer. It's a big, beautiful, mysterious God. Here we are. And we come to you now with all our prayers. With all that stuff that's taken up space within us. Our gratitudes and celebrations, our laments and our burdens, our anxieties and our fears, our wounds and our struggles, our joy and our fire. Everything that's going on within us. And we offer it to you. And we offer it to you because we ask for your spirit to receive it and to do her thing. Comforting, consoling, encouraging, healing, energizing, liberating. But as you do that, help us to know that it's also through us that you move. That we are called to be answers to these prayers especially the prayers of our neighbors. Those who have no voice, no power, no place. Those who are seen as disposable and unnecessary. Those who we forget. Those who we say don't matter. Those whose laments and cries go unheard and unseen. Give us the courage and the awareness to hear them and see them, especially when it makes us uncomfortable and challenges our privilege. Give us the energy and the, the advocacy to fight for and alongside them. Give us the imagination to see that a new kind of world is possible, that it doesn't have to be like this, that we don't have to be this way and give us the generosity to share with them what we have so they can have enough to. Help us be your hands and feet. Help us be a source of joy. And so God, these are our prayers. May you go to work in us and through us. And we ask this in the liberating name of Christ by saying together, Amen. Christmas is a season of hope. The Christmas story is a story about two people whose family and friends shun them for teenage pregnancy who were being literally hunted by a king who did not want their baby to survive. In their darkest moment, they were turned away from shelter at, an, at the inn. And these are two people who, against all odds, were still able to find courage and hope. When we understand it that way, we see it as a story of heroes. It's a story of light beginning to break through the darkness. 
As our friend Nick Coates from Red Deer Lake United Church often says, it's a story that reminds us that the worst thing is not the last thing. So in this season of finding light in dark places, we need to not just understand the issue of youth without housing in a bit more detail, but it is our duty to hold space for them and to take action steps to make a difference. We hope you all have an incredible Christmas. We hope you're able to gather and make merry. As Christmas approaches and you feel sparks of joy, share those sparks. Let's start a fire so that everyone, especially those without a table to gather, feel the warmth of Christmas. Hopefully, that warmth will stay with us throughout the year. And what a gift that would be. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territories of the people of Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprising of the Siksika, Pikani, and Kainai First Nations, as well as the Sutina First Nation and the Stony Nakoda, including the Chiniki, Bears Paw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. Thank you for everyone to everyone who makes Naked Faith possible. Uh, thank you to Andrew for hosting with me. Um, it's always a pleasure. Thank you to Brenda and Leanne for their work behind the scenes as always. A big thank you to the Naked Faith Band for all their hard work putting the music together each month. A uh, big thank you for uh, to Nick for the prayer this month. Uh, it was lovely and we appreciate it. Uh, and a special thanks to the Homeless Hub for being the source for so much of the information provided in this month's service. A big thank you to you for joining us, uh, for uh, uh, always being here, tuning in. And uh, like we said, have a very Merry Christmas, spark joy, be merry, and uh, we'll see you in the New Year's. Uh, to finish things out, here is Another Day in Paradise by Phil Collins, performed by the Naked Faith Band. Merry Christmas all, bye-bye.
Oh my gosh, my golly, it's time for mistletoe and holly. That's not what I meant to say. <coughs> Weathered leather. I'm haunted by the ghost of Christmas speech. <laughs>